Daniel Daniela and uh, Dennis Daniela, and vice versa, Dennis Daniela and Naira Daniela. <laughs> they are co founders of the Great, uh, great Ten Store, uh, which is a spin off of the um, company Van Hover Focus, right? Yes. And uh, the rest they will present by themselves. So let's hear them. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for having us here. Um, we are Naina and Dennis, and you can guess who is Gravity and who is Storm. Um, but um, today our talk is about prototyping and how it helps to uh, make the innovation quicker and faster. So, a little bit about us. We are um, of Fraunhofer. Fraunhofer is a, a biggest um, research institution for applied research in, in Europe. We are having about 60 institutes, uh, from biotech to Internet of Things, everything is there. And we've um, been created as a spin-off to make innovation faster, not only for other companies, but also for other spin-offs of Fraunhofer and Fraunhofer itself. So at the moment we're a pretty young company. We have um, we founded last year. We are having um, eight uh, colleagues. Dennis and I were founders, and um, but we have pretty big experience in years when we count all the years of our colleagues together. We have um, enough young colleagues and a lot of uh, very experienced colleagues uh, between us. So we are not only a consulting company; we are also a development company. And what we are doing is developing digital products from the idea to the launch. And uh, we involve in our process uh, different uh, um, experiences, like we are having IT and we are having business uh, consulting in the company, but also design and psychology. So this is our process. How do we work? And now I would like to switch to Dennis. We are switching back and forth, back and forth. And if you have questions, just stop us, give us a hand, and we will uh, answer the questions. So, welcome everyone from here as well. Um, this is actually our process, but I would like to take a step back and explain a little bit why. Because you could say, okay, there is companies have been doing products for in the IT maybe 50 years. And uh, why do we have to change it? Um, when we look at it, the, the basic idea is first we sit down, we think a lot, we think what the product will be that we develop, um, how it would look like, what the interaction would be, and then after we have finished the concept, um, the development of the product is being started. This has been proven a little bit difficult time and time again because as I used to say, after half the project, you have learned so much new information that you would like to throw everything away and start from scratch again, because many assumptions that you made in the beginning turn out to be wrong or turn out to be maybe slightly off. And uh, in the end, you end up with a product which is the thing that you have made the concept for in the beginning, but it might not be what the customer really once, or it might not be the best possible project uh, product. So, um, in the new as, a, as well as in the old ways, uh, you have these three phases. You have the ideation, where you basically start throwing around ideas, where you are on a on a pretty um, empty canvas, and you can do whatever you like. Then uh, you start to go a bit more in detail and. Uh, as I said, to develop the plan on what the end product will be, and then there's the development process. Um, our approach is a little bit different, as that we say, we try to go back, so that these boundaries, they are not they are not hard boundaries, but you can move back and forth. Do you have a question? Yes. Uh, why does the customer come to you in the first place, or what? How do they typically come to you with something so open ended? I mean, are they saying? I come up with an idea on the product, I mean, rather than it must have a goal, right? So, Right, so people usually come and they have a sometimes more, sometimes less defined um, idea of what they want. And uh, usually they are not very in-depth, usually they come and say, okay, I want to have 
this or that problem solved. And this is where it really starts because sometimes they have a very, or actually most of the time, they have a rather vague idea of what they want, well, what problem they want to solve. They just have something that they see, okay, this is a problem, I want, I want this to go away. But most of the time they don't have much more details on what they really want to do. So part of what we do is in the concept phases, we start to um, find out what is the problem. What is the problem that we have to solve? What, where do we want to improve? Um, Are these usually their internal, their internal problems, like they need to improve a workflow or that they want to develop a product that they then uh, will sell and market? Sometimes we can, we can go, um, uh, we, can, we can be really um, concrete. So we have, for example, currently we are working for a startup, pro a startup company. Um, they have a software product that they want to launch in, by the end of the year. Um, so they claim they did not have the development resources to develop this product on their own, so they were looking for an agency to do that for them. And um, they also did not have the, the experience, that is something that we have been uh, finding out a lot of times, is even with big corporations, for example Bayer, uh, it's like one of the biggest um, medical corporations uh, in the world. Um, they are very good at making medical products, but they are not so good at Developing software, so uh, they came through uh, to us um, for, uh, and asked us to develop a, a certain piece of software um, to improve a certain process, and uh, that was basically it. They did not; they don't know about how the product, what the product life cycle is. They don't know um, how to how to roll out software to clients. They even don't know. A, bit, uh, a lot about um, software um, business models. So at the beginning, they did not even know. They just knew, okay, we want to do something in this space because we have a strategic um, goal. But they did not know if they want to sell it, for what price they want to sell it, what the model is. Is it more something that you um, that you rent or that you pay on a monthly basis, or you want to pay a lump sum in the beginning? Um, they did not even know how much of that product they want to sell. So. This also sets the stage for, they don't want to come up and say, okay, here, develop this product, here is like, I don't know, say a number, half a million euros, or, or 100,000, or 20,000, and develop something. Because their, their thing is, they don't want to spend too much money, and they want to have uh, points where they can say, okay, we go further, or no, the idea was not so good, uh, let's just drop it, we have spent a little bit of money, that which is okay. Um, without them having to, to basically take the whole amount of money and plan it and then it's locked for the rest of the time and then in the end we have a product that no one needs. So that is basically the, the, the biggest pain of the customer is that they don't want to go on a, on a non unknown journey, as I was saying. Risk. Risk, yes. 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 So this is why we have these gates here. And uh, in the beginning there are a lot of ideas, so um, we try to um, take the best of these ideas, work on them. And then we have this first gate where we say, okay, these ideas are worth um, exploring further. Uh, and so they are going to the next phase. And then we do the same. We uh, evaluate um, the ideas a little bit further. We create a, a small, high-level concept for that. Uh, we do prototypes. This is what we're hear about today. And uh, sometimes we also do the pitch coaching where we, um, because usually or sometimes um, there is an internal, how do you say, uh, a project or a uh, internal stakeholder who wants to um, be involved, but he, he doesn't want to spend all the money on several ideas. So they say, okay, we are three teams, have the best ideas after the, the pitch, we will decide who is going to develop the MVP or go further. So we want to see a pitch and we want to see a prototype. Otherwise, it's stopped here. So here they have a second possibility where they can say, okay, we go further with this, or no, this is just not working out. Um, it's been a nice idea, but in reality, it doesn't pan out. And then after the, the idea or the, the concept has passed this gate, we go to the um, the real development phase, and also this phase, it's not like you block this and, and there is no out. You can 
Um, I think you probably also heard about Agile development and Scrum, where you have like also blocks which uh, are, are fixed and defined, but outside of these blocks you are allowed to um, change the concept, bring in new ideas, refine on ideas that you have worked on before, and so on and so forth. So, um, the whole idea is basically we have a lot of ideas and then we boil it down, boil it down, boil it down, boil it down until we arrive at the point where we have the best possible idea and the best possible product, of course, uh, to go then public and, and sell it to the customers. So, this new common acronym has a last in design at our network, which is one of the most important I have a question. You basically described something similar to the UX design sprint. Um, where is uh, the user research part in this? And how do you do, or do you do any user research? How do you squeeze it into your sprints? Mm -hmm. um, do you want to answer? We are doing user research in the first phase, in a design thinking phase, where we are having the ideas, and then we are trying to um, connect with users. We are not only having an idea like this. I think it's good for the user, but we are we are doing it in in, in a way that we can uh, go back and forth with prototyping here again. So so first we have this idea. We, we just say, do you think? How do you think? What 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 about it? Is it your need? Is it your pain? But we don't ask them. Oh, we have a beautiful idea. What do you think about it? But we ask them about the pain we think they have if they need this product. So we are asking them, so how is your day, what is the most difficult part of your day doing this task? And then they tell us what is the task and how they are, what are the difficulties. And then we, we understand probably more about the need than we assumed before. Uh, during the prototyping phase, so basically this is, this is what you say. So we call this, we usually call the concept of a concept, but we call it a hypothesis. So this is something we think is the right solution to the problem. Um, so what the next step is, is we have to spend as little money as possible to make something where we can have the user either falsify or verify that we are on the right track or not. So um, the idea here is to make these prototypes as small as possible and as big as necessary um, so we can say, okay, this is going in the right direction, yes or no. I understand, but what type of methods do you use? Like, um I don't know, personas. Uh, yes. uh, we will come back. Uh, yeah, we will okay. come, come to this oh. schema in uh, in the deeper uh, way of prototyping. We are using personas and we are using uh, interviews in different ways. Okay. Oh. Part part of it is out of the scope of this of this talk, but uh, part of it I think we will go into more detail uh, later on. So. So. If you know about um, Lean Startup, it's usually create, um, build, measure, learn. We adapted it a little bit to create, measure, innovate, because for us, it's the learning, also the innovation of the product. And um, how we do it, we, we have it, this, this is our concept through the whole cycle, or the whole process, we are repeating and repeating it hundreds of times. And um, we have it. And, so what are we doing to make it work? We are prototyping a lot. And this is, um, now I would like to talk about how we see prototyping. So we have uh, some prototyping premises. Um, if you are been doing prototyping, some of you, of course. So, um, there are different um, views on the prototype. Some people think the prototype has to be perfect to show it to the customer, and um, we are not thinking that it has to be perfect. It needs to give answers. And um, also, some people say, "Well, this is such a complex, uh, complex uh, thing. We cannot prototype it." No, you can prototype everything anytime you want. And also, the third one is. You need to do it and just keep iterating. So, why prototyping? You know, this is about risk, as we told. It's all about the, the risk and minimizing the risk. If you are start prototyping, 
prosper here, you will ha have much higher risk of losing money if you start prototyping here during your concept development. So start prototyping as soon as possible. And this is the risk minim uh, minimization is the, in the center of, of this. I've been working for Fraunhofer for about eight years and I've seen a lot of prototypes from research aspects. They have been perfectly built technology pieces, like they've been working on a prototype for two years in a research project. And afterwards they came to the market and said, have a look, I have a beautiful prototype, let's bring it to the market. So, Very good, let's ask the customers what they think about it. But, well, I Difficult. You have to customize this type, this type, and this is not how I would like to see. And then you understand. Either you pump a lot of money to the marketing and the communication to sell a product that people do not really want, or you are going back in time and starting from the beginning. Then you lost a lot of money. And these are usually usually comes, um, prototypes developed to validate technology because it's research. It's not about only the product, it's for research. And um, um, you're starting with the user test and the proof of concept in, in this type of prototypes. And the prototype is really high-end. It's high-fidelity prototype. But the, pro the prototypes we are talking about are two-week prototypes. They're not two years in, in for this prototype taken. Only two weeks. They are developed to learn, and um, they, are focused, they are focusing on the customer touch points and how they will use it. And they are si simple and cheap, even crappy. So here are some types of prototypes we are doing. Um, we would like to introduce to um, to all of them uh, and. Um, We'll start with the storyboard and draw play. So usually we don't um, do storyboard and draw play for software prototypes. Usually you use it for hardware or real uh, products with which you can touch. Um, so what are you doing? You are visualizing the process and who is involved, who, who is the persona. In, so we are using multiple personas for this role play. Yeah. Um, who is not familiar with persona concept? Okay. Persona is um, you are trying to develop a, con uh, a product for a certain type of person. Like you are imagining, okay, she is a PR manager. She is doing climbing in her free time, and um, she likes to film the climbing during uh, um, during she is doing free climbing. So we are developing a drone for this person who will fly around her and film her during the planning. This is one persona, a drone. But the same drone could be used for another persona who is an um, 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 electricity park manager, which has very high towers, which are really difficult to overlook and to see if they are well or not. So the drone will fly high and to help the mechanic to, uh, to fix them have some instruments. So we have two personas, same product. And we are trying to develop the storyboard for two personas. We are doing a role play. Like I'm imagining I am this PR manager and what I need during I climb with this drone. So it's it's written, it's scribbled, sometimes they are like, like a comic book. And sometimes you are doing like a theater. Just to understand what are the steps to follow? Then, um, what, are you, what do you need as tools? You don't need much. You just need pen and paper and probably a word uh, or some other pro uh, program to write the text. This is my favorite prototype type. <laughs> this is the horse prototype. I like it very much because it's, um, it's creating an illusion of a real product without being real. So uh, the, the main difference between this um, product, uh, this prototype and looks like, feels like prototype is that 
inversion of the major system. Like, how, an example would be you are developing an, an, an elevator, and um, this elevator has to have a, a video uh, conversation for uh, if you are stopped in, in, in emergency, and you press the button, and then video appears, uh, uh, operator talks to you and says, how are you, how many people are in the elevator, Is everybody, does somebody have a heart attack? So how to build a prototype in this case? It's quite difficult. You take cardboard, you build the elevator, you build this uh, little window, which would be the video, and then you build the button. Somebody goes in, pushes the button, the cardboard opens, hello, can I help you? So, why do you do it? It's not only because it's funny and nice, it's because um, you needed to understand what will be the case we have this video thing inside and how it, how it would be used. So it's creating an illusion of automated system. And then the people went in, pressed the button, the, people, the person opened it, and he says, hello, how are you? Everything is good, everything good. Okay, the mechanic will come in half an hour. And then, okay, what are you doing now? Close the window. There yeah, again a lot, and this thing was used only one second or two seconds. Like, what is worth being there for two seconds? You could also press the button. Um, or staying there, talking to people. They are coming, they are becoming uncomfortable to talk to a strange person or to a stranger. So what to do? They put they understand it. it's uncomfortable situation. We need to put some videos on this on this thing so they can they can watch some favorite um, 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 videos from uh, from TV or um, YouTube or weather information or whatever to make them feel comfortable. Um, any question? And the other one is looks like feels like. So here is not about um, the, um, the creating of simulation of the automated system. It's about making it practical, like happy feedback, like how it will feel this medical product that you are building for somebody, how they will use it, how, it, how, uh, how they will touch it, um, how big it will be, um, and, and things like that. Where, where the wires go, where is the battery, where is the weight, mm -hmm. and, uh, so you have something that you can really play with without having developed a wheel for that. So. Uh, okay. So we are now moving more into the uh, classical software development uh, area, which uh, is uh, where I come from. Um, so what we do in the beginning really is a paper prototype. Paper prototype means um, usually you print out uh, on an A4 page uh, these, these uh, iPhone templates, which are basically just squares that have the same size as a mobile phone. And uh, then you start to draw uh, the interface on these screens and you start to draw the whole story. Basically, uh, you open the app, you have a loading screen, then you have maybe the first screen, uh, you have the buttons there, um, and you basically create the whole process of the application on paper. Um, and this is already this already gives you a lot of insight uh, on how the final app will will be used, will look like, and and what kind of problems you will face uh, in the future when you further develop um, this product. So once you are happy with the, with the paper prototype, this is also something that you can show the client. Um, and I think we'll just make a little, a little insert here. Um, talking to the client is always a, a difficult thing because, um, for example, when we work with, with uh, clients, it's, it's usually they are very afraid to show it to a larger audience in an unfinished state. Because they say, how can we show this to the client? They will not understand it, they will think uh, we are spending their big money and they should be just scribble stuff on paper. Um, but you have to be bold about it. You have to be certain about it and you have to go out and show it to them and, and get real users, people who are then in the end buying your product to test it. Of course, you cannot just show them and say, okay, how do you think this is? Because they will always say, this is a great idea and I love it already. Um, you have to come up with um, questions that are not misleading, not misleading, but... Um, not, not, 
that they don't feel uncomfortable telling you that it's not good what you are doing. So that, also, that's why we have a psychologist in our in our company, how to structure the customer interviews that way that it will be not not confusing, not confusing and not suggesting. Not suggesting them because that's to, the, to tell things. That is one of the biggest problems. Do you like this? Would you feel yes, comfortable with this? Yes, of course. They always find um, something new. It's great, and they, usually they have, they have a hard time um, understanding what the app is doing. And then if you ask questions, they in, usually they, they don't have much to say because it's just like five minutes after they saw it for the first time. So you have to post the real questions, or you have to post the right questions, so you will get answers that you can work on. Because if everyone just says love it, it's a great product. I will try it the other way around. We know there are problems with this product. We would like to ask you to find them, to tell us, like, to find them on. And they, they go and deliberately try to find the faults and then sometimes they get right. But they were from the beginning negative because you told them we are, it's not good. Right. So they are trying to find where, what's bad. Yeah, 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 I know. It's not, it's, 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 it's also the same like, measures. It's it's yeah. Better to show them a product yeah. and how will you use it. Exactly. So you have the first screen of the app. And then you maybe have like three items to choose from. And then first, before you show him the screen, you tell you tell the the, uh, the cut, you tell the user, okay, this is an app that will help you do task A. And so you just show him the first screen, and then you ask him, what do what will you do? Will you swipe? Will you push the button? Will you go around, or would you look at the menu? And so you, you are just looking what he is doing without asking. And then you understand what's the best way. And then you need some, um, not one customer, no, not one user, you need a couple of them to understand, okay, what is the best way to do it. Mm -hmm. Some people say you need hundreds of interviews at least to verify or falsify. It's, I don't think so that you need a hundred of interviews at least. On a certain point, you understand that there is no more additional information coming in after some point of interview. Might, be, might be five people. Well, what we did with one project, we went, we had, uh, we did a, a, a math, math um, program for kids. So we went into schools, uh, we had an iPad, we had them solve um, trigonomy um, questions. Mm -hmm. And it was all about what is the correct interface so they could take this line and align it in a 45 degree angle. So we had a little problem. This was a little bit a step further. We were done in the paper prototyping stage, but we already had the prototype. So uh, we just watched what they do, if they were able to solve the problem, and what they were trying to do. Were, were they pressing on something and it did not work? And did they understand the icons and so on and so forth? So uh, usually the best way is to take yourself back and just watch what they're doing once they have a clear idea of what the goal is. So we have jumped ahead a little bit. Um, but yes, so the tools, pen and paper, print and templates. Um, once you have your paper prototype in the stage where you think, okay, this is it, uh, you go to the next stage, um, which is basically the same thing that we did before, but you're not doing it with pen and paper, but you do it in a, in a uh, piece of software. Um, and you mock it up with uh, with, uh, with standard UI um, uh, items, standard user interface items. Um, this also helps you get it in line with, for example, uh, one of the one of the, the, the usual problems you have at this stage is when you're developing for for multiple um, mobile phone um, operating systems. Is uh, the, the Android users have a different understanding of how an app works than iOS users uh, have. And um, I think we all have seen this because this was something that started in like 2013 where uh, I am an iPhone and Apple user. And uh, before, basically, the iOS apps have been transformed to Android because that was not the leading market and then that changed at a certain point. And now um, you saw all these Android user interface uh, concepts come back or come to the iOS, which was basically a problem because the iOS users didn't understand what this menu that came on from the side came, came in from the side. This was not something that they learned that they were not comfortable with. 
But nevertheless, this was put in because they had these um, systems which were multi-platform, and you could just compile it once, you had to write it once, which was a big saving in, in, in money. But uh, at a certain point they found out, okay, the people don't understand it because it's coming from a different world and they have to first they have to learn this Android user interface world before they can use the app, which is basically um, something that kills uh, the performance or the sales of your app because people are looking at it and say, okay, I don't understand, how can I perform my task? And it's deleted. Because usually you have uh, about a couple of minutes user time, maybe not even that, on the websites they say you have about 10 seconds um, if the user is not getting his problem solved or he's not feeling he's on the right track, he will go back to Google, take the next page on the Google result list and then you basically uh, you have lost that customer. Um, so yes, this is now a little bit geared towards uh, mobile apps. So uh, what tools are you using? There are a couple of um, uh, prototyping uh, apps on the market which are very specific for prototyping. Uh, the one I like best is Sketch, but there are others like Balsamic. You can also use like standard drawing tools uh, like Visio or, or uh, Omnigraphle, or people also use Photoshop, but I wouldn't suggest doing that because it's uh, just like shooting with a cannon on, on, a, on a little ant or something. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So, after you are done with wireframe phase, is also something you can do user tests here and you can refine your prototype even further. Uh, and once you're happy with uh, what you have and the users understand it and uh, you have a high satisfaction level, then you go on to the next step. This is not really a next step, but uh, usually you do that um, in a, at about the same time where you start to click click through prototypes um, which is basically images and on each image you define areas that you can click on and if you click on this area the next image comes up and this is a way where you can pretty inexpensively um, uh, test the application because you can have mock-up data you can have the whole flow of the application already there without having written one single line of, line of code. Mm -hmm. Do you include the graph for design in this page too, or do you go with the right page? It's actually... Yes, it, yes it, it depends, it depends uh, um, on, on your customer. Um, the, the, um, uh, the, the project we're going to show afterwards, uh, we really did a high-end version because the goal was basically to have a demo that can be shown to the board of directors of the company um, so they don't understand wireframes. Uh, they want to have a nice looking product but in theory they would say never never bother with, uh, with high-end graphics, take your mock-ups that you did in the previous step and just make them interactive. Um, for this there are a lot of, um, not a lot, but just, just these two nodes I know. Envision is, I think, the market leader there. There is Marvel, which is basically doing the same. Um, we used to, to use a, a product which was called Prototype on Paper, or just Pop, um, which was a thing you could take your, your mobile phone, you can um, take a photo of the scribble wireframes we did in the first step, and then define areas that you can click on, and just like this, create the first click dummy of your of your app. 